river run, run through the hills, run river run to the sea, run river run to your place beneath the sun, run river run over me. Hi, this is Jan Lewis. Welcome to be my guest. Today we have back a musician who was on before a couple years ago. He says to the day, and Michael Blyweiss is with us. He is from Methuen and he plays the flute. He's got quite a story to share with us again if you didn't catch it the first time. Welcome, Michael. Thank you. Michael was here early and he got himself all prepared and he won't be playing the flute with us today because he doesn't feel that, uh, you don't feel your hands are, are doing the right thing, Mike? Right. They're not, Mike. They're all served. I developed arthritis in my late 30s and, um, what should I call it, a word of warning. I spent too much time trying to use alternate therapies and in the interim, the joints got badly inflamed and my fingers got distorted over time. Finally, after three years, I went on the traditional mainstream medicine drugs, which work wonders. I'm not in pain, but I've lost the flexibility. So I tell people, if you get arthritis, go to the, go to the um, rheumatologist, get the drugs. Exactly. But, the, but because of this distortion, my fingers don't lift properly, and especially this pinky, there's a, the E flat is played with the right pinky, and I can't reach that note without m taking a moment, shifting my hand, hitting the note, moving it back. And even then I have difficulty lifting the other fingers on the right hand, and so the reason I'm not playing today is I don't feel that my playing is good enough for television, but I always keep the flute out at home, and I practice every day to keep my hand in, so to speak. When did you become interested in make, in composing music? Um, it really started in late high school. I don't know exactly what motivated it, but somewhere in late high school, I just decided I wanted to write music. Well, when you were in school, did they have, we called them flutophones, but now they're called what are they called now? Did, um, we had to learn how to play. Well, the flutophone is not the same as a recorder. Okay, because we had flutophones. Yeah, they're different. They're fatter than a recorder. And they were white with a horn at the end or something. We yes. had to learn that. I yeah. liked it. Yeah. They're kind of like, um, I don't know why they don't put the kids right on recorder instead, because recorder is actually a real instrument. Oh, yeah. There are people who play it professionally in groups. What's the difference between that and the flutophone? The flutophone is, the body's kind of fat, it kind of, you know, looks like a snake that ate its dinner and it's still working its way down. Oh, you know, it's fat in the middle, thin at the end. Oh, okay. Whereas a recorder is straight through. Yeah. It's a straight tube. Yeah. I and remember the, the flutophone we had was white and it was straight and there's this little honk thing, a little, little horn thing at the end. Yeah, bell it's called. Yeah. And it was a fun thing to learn. You know, well, I had, had, it that it. In, had it in first grade. You did? You had it in first grade? Yeah, um, but it never, the school didn't continue it past that. So then what happened is when I was in fourth grade, we had the end of the year um, music concert. Mm -hmm. And these two girls got up and they played a flute duet. Um, I, belie I believe it was an arrangement of Schubert's Rosamunda. Um, I didn't know that at the time. And I actually have asked one of the one of the girls, you know, who continued in my school system through high school, and at one of the reunions I asked her what it was and she said, darned if I can remember. <laughs> but you remembered. But I remembered and I just fell in love with parallel thirds on flute. Yeah. So I ran home after school that day and said, I want to learn flute. So the next year they signed me up, which was a year later than you usually start. Yeah. But I moved into that school system in the middle of fourth grade. This was New Milford, New Jersey. I had been in New York before that. Yeah. So. Where did you grow up, Michael? Well, I started out in the Bronx. Oh, the Bronx. <laughs> the Bronx. And then when I was 10, we moved to this little bedroom community in northeast New Jersey called New Milford. New Jersey. And I was there through high school. Yep. 
and then I went off to college in Cambridge, Mass. Where did, which college did you go to? Um, MIT. Because you were majoring in physics, right? Yes, I knew I wanted to major in physics somewhere around 10th grade. My goal was to understand, really understand general relativity. As it turned out, um, I, the math you need for general relativity was beyond what my brain could handle. So I wound up getting a master's degree in applied physics and working in originally energy policy and technology. Then I moved into light bulbs in Sylvania. Then I got seduced by the computer side of the force, moved into computer programming, did that for about eight years, and then wound up moving into tech support. Oh my God, you did well in school, didn't you? I did. To get into MIT, you gotta be a genius. Yes, up until MIT. Then I started struggling to keep up. Okay, so when I you- I will admit that. So when you left college, Michael, then what? What did you do then? Well, you well, were getting sick too. He's gonna to well, share the story. Well, let's back up. Um, that I took a music minor in college. Mm -hmm. MIT requires every student to take a humanities minor. They want well-rounded graduates. Yeah. And so I knew that I wanted to do music, and I took basically every music course I could fit into my curriculum around the physics and math and laboratory courses and stuff. So I came out. I actually started composing um, while I was still there. Mm. I actually had, um, I'll call it a commission. I had three classmates where I lived who wanted a trio for violin, clarinet, and cello. So I threw one, to, you know, threw one together, and that was going to be the end of it. But then I had an idea for a second movement, which I wrote. And then, having written two movements, you need a third movement to complete it. And so I wrote the third movement actually during my gap year. I took a year off between college and grad school and traveled around Europe mm. and wound up spending about six months on a kibbutz in Israel in a work study program trying to learn Hebrew. That is, I, went through, I, went, I was a camp counselor in Massachusetts and one of the other counselors, she kept talking about, I don't know if she'd been to a kibbutz or what, but it sounded fascinating. Was it, was it fun? It was. You spent about half the day doing a job, yeah. whether it was helping to dig up potatoes. Every kibbutz has a factory, so I worked a night shift at a factory making tubes for shampoo and also picked grapefruit, dewormed all and pruned olive trees. That's amazing. And then you'd have but the other half of the day, you'd have class. Yeah. How long were you there? I was there a total of about six months. Okay. I discovered I do not have a strong aptitude for learning foreign languages. I have much more of an aptitude for learning computer languages. Yeah. Definitely. So anyway, so I wrote two pieces in college, um, or three pieces in college. Um, not all of them got written down right away. Um, the, the main theme for my string quartet, which I wrote back in 2019, um, I actually thought of when I was still in college, but I didn't actually sit down and write it until 40 years later. Better late than never, right? Better late than never. And it was originally going to be a symphony but I wound up downgrading it to a string quartet with better odds of getting played. Although I finished the string quartet just in time for this big annual chamber music play in in Newton, where you show up with your instrument, music you want to try, yeah. and every hour you form a new group. Do you, if people want you to come play now at a concert, or which, are you still doing that? I still do ad hoc. Okay. So open, open, if you will, open playing events. You know, I was playing with the Pomodoro Chorale in Salem during their open sings. I was still going to the chamber music things. Um, back in October, I played with um, 
a what would you call it a pickup orchestra mm -hmm. so I still do that we're talking with Michael Blyweiss <clears throat> and he is a musician and composer he plays the flute he's going to share his story though is why he doesn't he's not going to be playing the flute for us today it's quite a story um, he's amazing if somebody wanted to uh, get a hold of you Michael how would they do that the best way is probably to email me at M C Blyweiss B L E I W E I S S 54 at Verizon.net. How far would you travel if somebody wanted you to, to play? Probably an hour and a half. Well, it took you how long to get here today? <laughs> it took me, let's see, I left home quarter after 12, got here about a quarter after 1. Wow. So it took me about an hour. That, yeah, you, yeah, you did leave early. <laughs> you, so after that, you were in your 30s when they found out you had Crohn's disease? If I was 19. I was a freshman in college. 19, okay. And we treated it medically for about another 19 years. And then it perforated during a colonoscopy. <laughs> and they had to take it out. Yeah. And when they took me off the drugs is when I got the arthritis. The arthritis hit then? Yeah. When, how did that tie in, I wonder? What do you think? Well, my body, I seem to have a generalized autoimmune disorder. Yeah. My body just doesn't like itself. Yeah. And once one thing was taken away, the bot, my immune system went looking for something else. Yeah. So you began trying other alternative forms of medicine. Yes. And that didn't, or made it worse, right? Um, no, it just didn't make it better. Didn't make, show, you show which hand, show them what it did to you, what, he, what he's gone through. Finally, you went back to regular medicine. Yes, which slowed down the deterioration, got rid of the pain. Yeah. But, you know, the damage was done. And how, how many years have you been work, you know, playing your flute and working around it? Um, let's see, since 92. Oh, wow, that's great. That's 29 years? Yeah. Now, do you, um, so right now you don't go to as many places, right? Well, for the past year and a half, there haven't been places to go. Well, yeah, with the COVID and all that and all. I mean, I, I, I've, I mean, I tried doing some open mics, but I think that might be thing of the past. Plus, most of the open mics are rock musicians on their guitars. I like don't comedians. really fit in. <laughs> I don't really fit in. I'm classical. Yeah, definitely. What did your parents think when you decided I'm going for the flute? Well, they rented a flute. They rented it? Well, you start out renting it. Yeah. In case it doesn't work out in the first year. Oh, I never heard of but that. But it's a rent to buy. <laughs> so if 20, at that time, $25 a month. And then if you decide to keep the flute, you just pay the balance between what you've paid so far yeah. and the actual cost of the flute. And you kept it, right? I kept it. Actually, I had to go back to it yeah. after the arthritis. I wound up upgrading to a good open hole flute, but I can't hit the, hit the um, holes yeah. anymore. Yeah. Looks like sideways, so, yeah. I think our focus is moving away from what... Yeah. That's I yeah. I like to get back to the music. Oh, you want to talk again about the music? Go for well, it. Well, I mean, my purpose for being here is to promote my music. Sure. So, anyway, I've been composing, you know, since, really since I was in college. And I've written about um, 28 primary pieces, and a few of them I rearranged for solo flute. So if you look at the total catalog, it's probably around 32, you know, compositions and arrangements. I also did arrangements of songs I liked for flute and voice. And actually, that brings me to a future project, which is I publish my sheet music on Sheet Music Plus. And they've started a push now for encouraging composers to arrange songs that are still under copyright. You know, the only arrangements that I have up there now are public domain music mm -hmm. that I rearrange. But now they're encouraging people to do arrangements of copyrighted music, and they've made it easy to do. 
you just put a proper copyright notice mm. at the bottom of the piece of music, you give proper composer credit to the original composer of the piece, and you put it up, you get a 10% commission on anything you sell, mm -hmm. as opposed to the 50% on anything original or public domain. Mm -hmm. And I did arrangements of several songs, Rainbow Connection from the Muppet movie, um, Beginning to See the Light, um, How Are Things in Glockamora, mm -hmm. and I'm going to arrange those to put up on Sheet Music Plus. Mm. Now what's interesting is on Sheet Music Plus, the only things I've been selling have been arrangements. No, no I haven't sold one piece of original music. Mm -hmm. um, my biggest seller is a set of variations on Chopsticks. Oh. I've sold 10 copies so far. Um, my second biggest seller is an arrangement of the Queen of the Night aria from Mozart's The Magic Flute, mm -hmm. of which I've sold nine. And then I've sold a few copies of the Flore Pavan and Poor Wandering One, but all of these for flute and voice. Right. And But zero copies of anything original. Now what I've been doing, and due to the encouragement of um, my friend Lisa Shea, is I've been taking my music and I've been putting images over it, images that kind of match the mood or sense of the music, mm -hmm. and I've been putting them up on YouTube, mm -hmm. where they average about 30 views each. And then, and then in the comments, I post the links to Sheet Music Plus, where people can buy the music for themselves. How did you hook up with Lisa Shea? She's an author who's been on here many times. Um, we're both members of Mensa. Mensa, okay. And there's a Mensa Writers Group that meets up in Andover or North Andover periodically. Mm -hmm. And then she's running, been running Zoom workshops during the pandemic. Right. So that's every week. What's the poster you have? This in here. The, in the, uh, it's two-sided. Oh, okay. You'll have to tell me. Well, I don't know if you can zero in on tell this. Tell me when it's properly in the camera. See if we can zero in on that. Basically, these are screenshots from my YouTube channel. So this is basically screenshots of all the music I've put up on YouTube so far. I don't know how visible it is on television, Again. but you can see I've been busy. Is there able to get some and, of it? Yeah. And this has all been in the past year. That's a lot. Are those a lot of business cards? No, they're the thumbnails. When you go to YouTube, mm. okay, um, you go you to someone's it. channel, you have the little thumbnails. You got it. So this screenshot's no, on the back side. I printed out a list of all the pieces I've written. Very good. How many in all through the years, how many musical pieces have you written? It's probably... It's 28 um, primary compositions, and then another half a dozen, you know, flute solo yeah. um, renditions that I've done. What I would do is I would take the piece, I'd boil it down to just one line, trying to preserve the feel of the other parts. You know, like, so if there's um, a moving, mm. like an accompaniment line, I would try mm. to work it in yeah. in appropriate places. Now you say you like to work ad hoc. What are your favorite venues? Concerts? Private? What do you well, like the best? Well, the Palmador Open Sings in Salem, where they do the big choral works. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's a chorus and a pickup orchestra. Um, I also, I was doing the Amateur Chamber Music Players annual play-in in Newton, mm -hmm. which hasn't met in two years. Yeah, COVID. <laughs> I don't know if they're going to be meeting this March or not. Yeah. I'll probably find out somewhere in February. They're not doing a Zoom just to meet? You can't really do it. There's a time lag on Zoom. Yeah. And it's really, you know, you could do breakout rooms and stuff, mm. but everyone's internet connections are different speeds, and you can't really coordinate. Music has to be done in person. I know that when you were on the last time, the first time you was on the program, just before COVID, I had suggested that you get in touch with Dana Farber up the street, the cancer, because they were having pianists, guitarists, which is great for the patient's morale. 
And I'm not sure, did you ever connect with them? I, I spoke to them, but I decided that it was a long commute and that my flute playing was no longer up to snuff for solo work. When you're playing with a group, you can kind of bury your mistakes. Yeah, yeah. You like playing with a group? I do, yeah. I still do. I mean, I originally, you know, played in, in bands. I played in bands up until probably about 1994 yeah. when I, then my, I wasn't up to doing the long rehearsals yeah. and the concerts and I dropped out. Plus I also dropped out because one of my brothers was getting married and I wanted to write a piece to play at his wedding. And did you play it yourself? Well, I originally wrote it for flute, violin, and piano. Yeah. The idea was I'd play, play the flute, my, bro my other brother would play the violin, and my niece, who was in high school at the time, would play piano. Well, they weren't interested in working on it, wow. so I threw together a solo flute version, and I played that. Do you have any CDs of your music? Um, no. You need um, to. That would have been great. Well, besides the fact that I don't have the, the tools to burn a CD, um, Microsoft um, used to come with a the utility called Sonic, where you could burn CDs and DVDs. Yeah. But when they went to Windows 10, they took it away. Oh. And there are really no other suitable, easy to use programs that took its place. So that's kind of out. I can make a CD of MP3 files, mm -hmm. but that's not the same. You know, I have a friend who would make them in a studio. There, I know of one particular gentleman, I think he is in Dudley Webster. He will actually, you can go in his studio, play your music, and he will cut a CD for you right then and there. I don't think I want my flute playing you don't immortalized want on CDs anymore. Really? Oh, it's so good though. You know? I mean, if you go to my YouTube channel, mm -hmm. almost all the music is synthesized. What it's exported to? from it's exported from a um, music typesetting program called Finale, and they will export mm -hmm. to an audio file. And the emulations are extremely mediocre, mm -hmm. but at least you can hear the melody, the harmony, and the counterpoint. How can they get to your website? Um, well, the you YouTube. want to go to my YouTube channel. Yeah. So you can just go to YouTube. Type in Michael Blyweiss, um, B-L-E-I-W-E-I-S-S, -E -E -S, and the channel will come up. Unfortunately, um, I my, my actual channel name is a cryptic string of letters and numbers <laughs> because you need 100 subscribers mm -hmm. before you can rename it after yourself. And right now I'm only up to 52. Really? You have to have an exact number? You need at least a hundred. You need a hundred or more wow. to rename the channel. Hmm. Well, you, you're so good, you probably can get it up to the next 50. So, I'm encouraging people to go to my YouTube channel, mm -hmm. and if you have a Google account, you can log in and you can subscribe. And when I get to a hundred, then I can name it Michael Blyweiss Music. Have you ever thought of teaching? You probably have, mentoring people? I, I used to give flute lessons, mm -hmm. mostly to adults. I got frustrated because they were never practiced. Mm. And at this point, I'm really not suitable for giving more than beginner lessons. That's okay. That's you like working with, uh, with adults learning the flute? Um, no, because they never practice. Because they don't? And they don't get better. I remember taking piano lessons for years and being in, uh, what do you call it, the things in front of the parents and everybody. At, uh, Recitals. <laughs> Recital. I remember that. And uh, my parents made sure I sat down like an everyday practice. But I lost interest because now it was guitar. <laughs> it's like, we've got about four minutes left. So Michael, you are, are you, you're available if somebody would like to have you come and play? Or you just kind of have to go it by ad hoc, by just by feeling. By ad hoc and by feeling. Um, like I said, it's you know I'm not happy with my performances anymore. 
Um, so it would be ad hoc, and they'd have to put up with, you know, my having to pause to play E flats. Mm -hmm. I think you know, those of us who don't understand the flute, but it's gorgeous music, would probably be happy with anything you could do because when you go for, let's say, a massage, right? What do you have in the background? With the flute, like the Indian flute music. It's yeah. so relaxing. It's fair. Do you find it relaxing to do it yourself, playing your flute? Um, mostly, yes. Mm. Although my cat leaves the room whenever I pick up the flute. Are you s really? Yeah. You're, you how many cats do you have? Just one. How old is he or she? He's um, going on 11. He's a little bit older than our cat. So he doesn't like your music? <laughs> no. And when I was a kid, we, we had a cat. Yeah. And he'd leave the room whenever I practiced. Well, that's great for the morale. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Everyone's a critic. Everyone. So how many brothers and sisters do you have? Um, I have four. Are you the oldest or youngest? No. I'm the oldest. Do they like your work, your flute playing? Um, they don't listen. What? That's crazy. I, I can't get my own family to go with my, to my YouTube channel. Oh, well you guys go, we're all going to his YouTube channel. I mean, what the heck? Flute music is beautiful. I remember the first time you were on the show. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's good. I, he still played some today for us, and I still think it was great, but you're the musician, and if your fingers don't feel right, you have yes. to make a decision. Michael, thank you so much for being on the show. I know you came quite a drive to get here. We'll see you next time, and be my guest. Riding on a shooting star Heading out toward a dream Tomorrow's even closer Than it seems